Howdy neighbor, how is your garden growing? My garden is doing fantastic and my native flowers are really in bloom and the butterflies are loving it. And if you've been wondering what you should be planting in Florida in the month of June, this is the video for you. We're gonna talk about what vegetables, tropical fruits, and what native plants you can find blossoming in the month of June. And of course, we're gonna be doing loads of tips along the way so that we can keep ourselves on track as summer officially arrives. And as always, I'm gonna be using my handy dandy 2023 Wild Floridian Planner to help keep me on track on what to plant and when to plant it. And if you'd like to get your copy of the 2023 planner, go to www.wildfloridian.net slash planner. So let's start with what should we be planting in the month of June for vegetables? Well, for me, it's a relatively short list. We're going to be talking about roselle, loofah, seminal pumpkins, okra. Really, we're talking about hot weather crops. These are our hot weather crops because it's, it's, it's hot. It's really hot. Like, it's not even a question. We've gotten into the officially it's hot range. So it's these plants that come out of the subtropics and tropics that are gonna be able to handle Florida's June weather. But that doesn't mean you can't get things that act like classic crops up north. Because of course you can grow things like seminal pumpkin, which I just did a video where I answered all of your guys' question, taking a deep dive into it. Seminal pumpkin is like butternut squash. So even though a butternut squash would do terrible at this time of year, you could be growing seminal pumpkin and you could start it from seed. My friends in South Florida, it would not be a good idea to start from seed at this point. You should wait until the fall, but those in North Central Florida and Northern Florida, absolutely get your seeds and go get it planted. Another thing to consider is beans. Now, some of our classic beans that we would choose for up north wouldn't work at this time of year, but things like these tropical Puerto Rican black beans are doing awesome. They look super happy. They look unstressed. They look pest free. And honestly, the bumblebees have been really enjoying some of our opening flowers. Puerto Rican black beans can be used just like you would any other type of black bean from stews, dishes, rice and beans, pick your choice. And for me, I love growing Puerto Rican black beans through the summer because they give me a lot of cover on my trellis and provide some additional shade when it's really hot out and really humid and I just need a break from the heat. And if you're looking for something else to grow on your trellises besides things like Puerto Rican black beans, you may wanna consider another plant that is often not talked about a lot in the gardening community outside of the tropics and the subtropics, and that is Lufa. This tropical plant grows amazing during the summer and it can be used like a squash substitute. Now not of course our winter squashes like a pumpkin but more like our summer squashes like zucchini. This vine once it gets going oh my gosh you only need a couple of plants to take over a huge amount of space. I only had three plants last year and I was honestly overwhelmed. So if you're thinking about doing zucchini make sure that you have a really large space so that this plant can really take over and you can even be grown along fence lines. So if you just have like a chain link fence that you've been thinking, what should I grow on it? This would be a great one through the summer. Now you may be wondering, that doesn't look quite like a zucchini. No, because once your loofah is fully mature, this is the loofah that you would use in a shower. Now this crop, unlike other crops, may not be one that you want to grow every year. Our friend at Southern Latitude made the recommendation that she grows loofah only every three years because the amount of loofahs that she gets. But if you haven't grown loofah before, this may be the time to add it for the first time to your garden. But don't forget, you can still get classic crops like sweet potatoes growing at this time of year, especially my South Floridians and my South Central Floridians. It is warm enough. It is hot enough. This tropical crop, it will be happy. So go ahead, get yourself some organic sweet potatoes and get that started. If you want to learn a lot more about sweet potatoes, I have a whole video that answers tons of your questions about growing sweet potatoes down here in Florida. I will link that at the end and in the description so that you can check it out later. And of course, for my South Floridians and my Central Floridians that live in the Southern range, it is time to start getting going on your tropical plants. It is definitely hot and humid enough and is starting to dump rain and these plants love it. So start getting plants like papaya and bananas growing in your garden. But you might have areas that are really shady or you've already started to create a food forest and you're looking for things that you can add in the understory or those shady areas that just get only a little bit of sun throughout the day, but you're in luck. This space is great actually for a tropical plant that doesn't really like being in a ton of sun, and that's gonna be ginger and turmeric. So consider using spaces like this or this to go and add some ginger or turmeric to your garden. And when it comes to ginger, you need to watch out because actually this right behind me is ginger, but you can't eat it. Down here in the subtropics and tropics of Florida, we have plants like this, variegated ginger, that is a ginger plant 
but it's not an edible ginger plant. And actually the same can be said for even things like bananas. There are ornamental bananas that you may find at the store along with ornamental gingers. Those are not the ones that you're supposed to eat. You do need to make sure that you ask someone at the nursery if they're the edible type. If they're not sure or they guess at it, don't buy it. Go to one of the many local nurseries around the state and go pick yourself up an edible banana and edible ginger. Or you can just run to Publix and grab yourself some ginger from the grocery and go and plant that. That actually works just as well for us here in Florida. Now let's talk a little bit about grass. Actually, not grass the way you're thinking, but one of the many types of giant edible grasses that grow here in Florida. Yes, from bananas to papayas to sugarcane are all in the grass family and are something that can add a lot of nutrition and food to your yard. When it comes to sugarcane in Florida, we here in Florida are actually the top produce of granular sugar for the United States. We are really, really good at making sugarcane and it grows really well in your garden. It's actually super easy to grow. And depending on where you live in the state of Florida, sugarcane especially in central and south florida can grow almost the entirety of the year but let's talk more about your regular standard everyday grass when it comes to florida summers and your lawn this becomes the tipping point of whether it actually is healthy or it's not healthy and issues that you have in your yard are really going to take off at this time of year a lawn that's doing a healthy like this area right here it's happy it's green it's full is going to continue to do well but what you're going to find out and starting in the month of june are any low spots that get way too much water secondly this is going to be the time of year where you're going to see a lot of pest activity start to take off last year mole crickets were what started to take out the majority of my lawn in my backyard and as the pests start to wipe out your lawn what you'll often find is empty spots and weeds start to take over and this may cause you to grab herbicides and pesticides to try to clear up the problem but just as a friendly reminder as we go into the rainy months broad spectrum from spraying of herbicides and pesticides is actually really problematic to our waterways. So while you might consider doing a small local treatment on one specific area, spraying your entire yard is a problem for our environment and ecosystem overall. But if you're curious about some of the weeds that may come into your garden and whether you need to do something about it or maybe wait to a better time of year to get your garden back under control, I'll add this video at the end so that you can learn about some of the common weeds that just show up in your yard. And now let's talk a little bit about flowers, specifically specifically tropical exotic flowers like our hibiscuses. In the southern part of Central Florida and South Florida, hibiscuses will actually bloom almost the entirety of the year. So if you've been looking for a Florida friendly flower that just keeps going and going and going, hibiscuses would be actually one of the best options where you can actually bring in a lot of color, a lot of beauty, and they're pretty low maintenance. And they'll be one of the plants that has zero issue with dealing all of our heat, our humidity, pest pressure, they don't mind it. So get yourself hibiscus if you're thinking about tropical exotic. And some of you, especially in Southern Florida and the Southern parts of Central Florida, you probably have noticed a lot of blooms happening on some trees. We've been seeing things like Jacaranda, Ponciana, and for me, my Cassia Fistula is just starting to bloom, bringing in yellow flowers. And when it comes to actually yellow flowers, this month has exploded with so many native wildflowers in yellow coming into bloom. Starry Rosin, which actually bloomed through the entirety of winter for me, Coryopsis Leavenworthy, which has actually started to really explode right around Mother's Day in May, and it's really starting to take off. I'm excited because it's my favorite wildflower. All of our narrow leaf yellow tops are really exploding all around the garden with blooms and blooms and blooms which I need to watch out for because they've already spread everywhere so <laughs> I need to get them under control a little bit more. Another one that's created a huge blanket over the ground and it's a great ground cover alternative if you want to get rid of your lawn but don't necessarily want to step on the area a lot which would be dune sunflower which has put out tons and tons of blooms throughout the last few months and continues and will continue to be awesome through the entirety of the summer. We actually found that by combining mulch with some dune sunflower we've actually raised up our yard in one section by a couple inches Inches. Another wildflower that you should really consider adding to your garden that is already in bloom and it's going to bloom more and more as we head through summer and then into fall is goldenrod. It's edible, it's medicinal, and is imperative to the monarch migration. And if you're looking for some other ground cover or lawn alternatives that can actually help you build up your soil in different sections, frog fruit and sunshine mimosa we just found added so many inches so many inches of soil to our garden. I literally, I'm stepping up into beds that I never had to step up into. And that will bring me to another video that you may wanna check out is five lawn alternatives, because at this point of year, you may start to really struggle with the idea of lawn as it gets hot and humid and the sun intensity. Oh yeah. 
And if you're starting to think, man, I don't have enough to do in my vegetable garden and tropical plants, once they're established, are pretty easy. And I really wanna go and work on adding a lot of plants this month. Well, honestly, native wildflowers would be a great option. Beyond all those yellows, things like Stokes Aster have been one of the favorites of the monarchs in my garden this last month. And I'm finding that all of my swamp milkweed is starting to go into bloom, so that's gonna be just really pretty. I've actually been really enjoying a lot of the color that the native plants have been adding this month, from the purple of Stokes Aster to the blue of our woodland sage to my pink flamingo tropical sage. Lots of great colors and more is coming in as we head into the heat, humidity, and the sun intensity of summer. Which brings me to some of my tips for the month of June. But this community has so many great Floridians here, so I would love to hear what are some of your tips for June. Plus, what are you thinking about growing this month? down in the comments, let me know. June is the beginning of summer and that goes without saying, but honestly, for those who are new to Florida gardening or have not really gardened in the summer months, summer is hands down the hardest time of year to garden. Even if you've come from a place that gets just as hot as Florida or even potentially hotter, the sun intensity is so strong starting in June. It takes a really short amount of time for you to get burnt. But besides just getting sunburned, honestly, things from sun exhaustion through sun poisoning, which is an actual thing, it is very easy for you to really get a low electrolyte balance, get overwhelmed by the heat and potentially put yourself in unsafe position where you're not making good decisions because of the heat intensity and the humidity and the sun intensity, which is why we recommend that you do most of your gardening early in the day. Sun intensity is just less. It doesn't seem logical because the sun is at equal points in the horizon, so you should be able to do as much at the same point of day in the morning as you would in the afternoon, evening. But because of things like transpiration and evaporation, there's a lot more water particles in the air early in the day, which actually diffuses the light and makes it a little bit less intense for you and your plants. And that brings the other thing that's coming in the month of June, which is our summer thunderstorm. Besides not being caught in dumping loads of rain, let me remind you, we are the lightning capital of the United States. We get more lightning strikes and more lightning fatalities than any other state in this nation. And during the month of June, we get hyper, hyper focused localized storms. This is the time of year where it's raining in your backyard and not in your front yard, where your neighbor gets rained on and you don't. It's super weird, I know, but lightning travels 20 to 30 miles. So even though it's not thundering directly above you or right next to you, it doesn't mean that you can't get struck by lightning. There are many people in Florida who get struck by lightning, even though mostly what they see is a blue sky, which is why you need to make sure that when you hear lightning or you're seeing starting to see dark clouds that you just quit what you're doing for the day. Don't hold metal shovels. Don't be hanging on metal trellises. It's not a safe thing to do. And the second thing is, is that continue to do the work early in the day because most of your storms are gonna come in the afternoon. Because the water has been heated up and evaporation has accumulated through the day, typically more of your storms will come in the afternoon, evening, or even potentially right before night. But that doesn't mean all of your storms will. Sometimes they build up a lot of energy and pull in a lot of moisture, but they don't actually storm until the next morning. So make sure one of the things that you start doing in the month of June is check the weather, check your forecast for rain specifically, and specifically check your radar regularly so that you know what storms are in your area. Not my area, your area. And when it comes to large projects, honestly, just skip them at this time of year. You'll still see me doing some crazy large projects, but honestly, if you don't need to do them right now, don't do them right now. One of the major focuses that I'm gonna be doing in the month of June is actually setting mulch and doing a lot of weed pulling because if I don't get this garden under control before we hit July and August, it's gonna get really out of control. And then I'm just gonna go through the same thing I go through every year, which is in fall, I try to reset everything and it takes forever. So one of the other things you may wanna do when you go out in the garden, besides planting some new plants, is pull weeds, set paths. And actually what I'm gonna be doing is this, in one of the upcoming videos is you're gonna see Ben and I laying down a ton of mulch so that we can just suppress a bunch of stuff out and we don't even have to worry about any little seeds taking off in the area. And a friendly reminder, if you wanna keep track with all these tips plus more and ideas for what to grow, when to grow it, go get your planner at www.wildfloridian.net slash planner. And if you wanna learn more about Seminole pumpkins, check out this video here. Sweet potatoes here, weeds that you might find in your yard here, and of course some lawn alternatives so you don't have to deal with that pesky lawn. Check out this video here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.